What is going on guys? Jack here and welcome to part 4 of the Determination and Work Rate Experiment Research, whatever you want to call this series. Uh, it's kind of something new on my channel and we are coming towards the end of this, the first kind of research um, that I've conducted in the game, looking at the impact of Determination and Work Rate on the development of youngsters. Uh, so yeah, this will be the last part, guys. I've had plenty of requests and suggestions from you guys about future research things. If you've got any more that you want to suggest, possibly for my next episode or future research kind of series, leave them down below. But let's get straight into today's thing. And for some reason, I've got the chosen one open, so we'll, we'll start with him anyway. Uh, we're one year on from the last episode. Um, so all the players are now 30, kind of expecting their decline, but, you know, we'll, we'll see what happens. What, what I'm going to do this episode is I'm going to try and keep the yearly kind of reviews of each player kind of shorter and slightly more brief. And then at the end, we can really have a good look and maybe come to a conclusion on, I guess, what impact determination has. So here we have the chosen one. He's now got 100 caps for England with 36 goals. Um... Last season, he only made 22 appearances for Manchester United. Um, in that time, he did have a torn calf muscle, uh, ta yeah, torn calf muscle, and a few other little injuries which have kept him out um, at the start of the season. So that's a little bit of a bummer for him. He still played well when he has made appearances for Manu. Average rate of 7.5 with 14 goals in fo in 22 games. That's pretty good league form. So he he's going strong still. Then we have Pierre Determination here, still at Aston Villa. He is still their vice captain, uh, looking like a very good player now for them. Last season made 33 appearances, good stuff by him. Um, yeah, he's he is looking strong. It has to be said. Um, he's on 150,000 pound a week, and he is still really at the top of his game. It would have to be said that none of the kind of the chosen one nor Pierre Determination has shown any signs of decline. Uh, moving on to Pierre Balance here, still playing for uh, Southampton, still only one cap for England, uh, Southampton, oh ok they finished in third but didn't win the playoffs, Paul Jules now their manager so that's another new manager, I think it was Paul Jules who I cut out the corner of my eye was it? Yeah, it was. Um, so he's kind of just had the same old season. He's really been there for so many years now. Um, but finally, we get some changes. It would it would appear. No brain here, is it? Sligo Rovers, is it, in Ireland? Don't quote me on that. I think I'm right. Yeah, the Irish Premier Division. 12 appearances for them. Uh, one player of the match and three goals. Average rate of 6.88. Didn't make any appearances for Burnley, and now he's finally got himself a club where it looks like he's going to be playing some first-team football. Um, he's not actually registered currently for the club, so that's an interesting one. Maybe he really is a fringe player for them. Uh, if I change the view to contract, he oh he is registered as a key player, so I'm not sure about that one. And then we come up to Pierre Workrate, who is a free agent, it would seem, yes. Um, no appearances in the last four years for... Uh, Southampton are now finally been released from them. So that's pretty big shock. I would have thought that Pierre Workrate would have had enough determination about him with 11 determination to make something of his career. But honestly, he really hasn't. So that's pretty interesting. Um, there's no real shocks here, I'd say, to be honest. Uh, maybe the fact the Chosen One's value is still uh, 22.5 million is a bit of a shock. Um, achievements... No major achievements shortlisted for the World Golden Ball Award. I will take a look actually at the end at uh, players' achievements and biographies so we can look through them then. So I'm not actually going to spend too long. So what I'm going to do, guys, is I'm going to go forward two years this time. And the reason for going forward two years is because I'm not sure how long the players are going to be playing for. So by going forward two years, there's a little bit more to review. And um, hopefully slightly more will have changed. Okay guys, so we're back and it's 2030, that seems like such a bizarre date, but let's see how the players have got on across the last two years, and there's been no changes, oh brilliant, brilliant, um, yeah, so it looks like slow progress, oh, pure work rate's become of coach, it would seem, so he's clearly given up on football, did he get a job after Southampton? No, he did not. So that's maybe a little bit of interest. The fact he's just retired and gone and got a job as a coach aged 32. Uh, no brain. 
still playing for uh, is it Sligo Sligo Rovers? We'll go with it. It's probably not right. And if you're from Ireland and I've butchered that name, I apologise. I need to fix this badge because look how big it is. That's not right. Um, but no, looking at the average ratings and stuff. He's played quite a lot of first-team football, it would have to be said for them, which is kind of good for him. I'm kind of happy that No Brain, despite his pure derpiness, is still getting some kind of you know first-team football somewhere. It's nice to see. Uh, his contract runs out at the end of next year. Or actually, no, it runs out uh, at the end of... Oh, God. He's got 18 months left on his contract because it ends in December because the Irish season's different. Sorry, I had to work that out in my head. So he's had a, a, a half-decent career. He's dropped to a first-team player, but he's still got a year and a half left. Peter Balance still at Southampton in the last two seasons, still a first-team regular. Southampton got promoted again but have gone straight back down. Is Paul Jewell still the manager? No, he is not. Jordan Mutchers, who I believe, who does he play for? I'd recognise his face on my face pack from somewhere. Let's check. Um, okay, he played for B Bolton and um, Birmingham. Yeah, we'll go with that. I don't know, actually. No, wait, he's been a manager for a while. I've got to remember how far I am in the future here. Like, everyone's retired, pretty much. I need to... Because, obviously, I made the players 14. Yeah, damn, we really are in the future, aren't we? <laughs> um, I, didn't quite I couldn't quite remember how far we are in the future... Um, but no, looking interesting for Southampton. You could see his stats aren't actually that bad, to be honest. Obviously, his physical's really starting to decline. I'm kind of expecting to see that pattern everywhere. But he's still getting first-team football for them. And interesting to see him play 26 league games in the Premier League this year at the age of 32. Because that's pretty impressive stuff. Then moving on to pure determination. We can see him here. 93 caps for England now with uh, 20 goals. Really impressive stuff for him. Uh, last two seasons, he's made a combined total of 68 league appearances for Villa, which is, I mean, that's that's really good stuff. Looking at them, a lot of come as appearances off the bench. He is still their vice captain, which is good to see. And Villa continuously kind of qualifying in the for a European Cup, and in fact, they've won qualified for the Champions League the past five years now. So that's pretty impressive stuff. In fact, I think in the last ten years. No, the, yeah, no, sorry, the last nine years they've qualified for it eight times, so that's pretty impressive stuff. But good to see him still being kind of a key player for them. Obviously, coming on off the bench a lot, uh, his physicals haven't declined as much as, um, what you call it, as much as Pierre Balance, uh, which is kind of interesting to see. I don't know if that comes down to the training schedule he's on or uh, just the fact that they started off higher, so they've although they're declining, they don't look as bad. But good to see him still getting first-team football, and his mentals are looking really solid now. And last but not least, we come on to the chosen one, who is still a key player for Manchester United and has 123 caps for England. That's pretty crazy stuff. Um, oh, and he's the captain as well. Damn. Okay, that's really impressive that he's captain of Manchester United. So he's been there a number of years now. Man U, last two seasons, have really struggled. 7th and 5th, so not ideal for them. Uh, in those two years, he's played a lot of football, it has to be said. He's played, uh, in all competitions, 98 games in the last... Um, in the last two seasons, and then in the league, he's missed all. He's played in all but one game, and he played every game this most recent year, which is incredibly impressive. Seven point two nine average rating as well, which is insane. It has to be said. His physicals are still looking really solid as well. Yeah, I mean you can see here, really solid player. Just a quick comparison between him and uh, Pierre Balance. Not Pierre Balance. Sorry, Pierre Determination is who I want. Where is Pierre Determination? There he is. Um, oh, you can't see them, can you? Why did I make the polygon that colour? <laughs> uh, but you can see here, they're very similar players still, but the chosen one still just about edging it. Um, interesting to see that the guys with higher, uh, higher work rate are still fatter than the ones without higher work rate. So clearly those pies continuing to pile up I suppose <laughs> uh, looking at the heights as well just a thing of note is that I often hear people saying oh my players don't grow in FM um, I can tell you for a fat player's heights do change and this proves it if there was ever a myth about that so you can see here how their heights vary um, looking at their values all the players values starting to decline 
you'd kind of expect that with them um, kind of being as old as they are. Uh, really impressed, though, that the Chosen One and Pure Determination still playing for England. Um, if I look at their squad, are they still starting? The Chosen One and Pure Determination both still starting for England, which is really impressive. Um, yeah, that's crazy stuff, to be fair. Um, I, I'm kind of amazed that they're still playing. Um, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go forward another two years, guys, and then we're going to go if they're still, if like one person's still playing, I'll go right to the end. Then we can take a look at everything as a whole. So I'll join you guys in just another second. Okay, guys, and we're back, and it's 2037, you'll notice. And the reason that I've done this is because I realised that the previous two parts I'd recorded were pretty darn long. And so I thought I'd go to the end of all the players' careers, and then we can look back on each player as a whole, um, kind of look at what they did right, and then kind of have a conclusion rather than me having to cram in a few extra years. I'll cover them all at once here. So as you can see, uh, all the players have now retired. Uh, two have taken up jobs elsewhere. The chosen one is now an under-18s coach at Huddlesfield. And Pierre Balance is a coach at Reading. Both players with pretty decent stats as well, which is kind of cool to see. So, I'm not sure what order to do these in. I suppose I should say things first. Pierre work rate does not have a history. I told it to save his history after retirement, but it doesn't appear to have worked. Um... But to be fair, he was a free agent for a very long time. He's clearly retired from the game. And he was kind of the pure work rate side of things. Didn't really seem to impact training. And he was the guy who was always at Southampton for a number of years. Um, and then he's just retired as a free agent. So that's that. I can't really cover him because, as I've said, his history didn't save after retirement, even though I ticked it. So I suppose the next person to cover is No Brain and his career... So, as you can see now, he's a coach looking for a job. He is 39. Looking at his history, uh, following his spell at Sligo Rovers, at the end of his contract, he went to Braintree, then to Haverton Waterlooville, and then to Hampton and Richmond. As you can see, he actually made a lot of appearances late on in his career. Uh, and he, he had a lot of solid years, it has to be said, in the non-leagues of England. Found some success in the Blue Square uh, south, which is kind of cool to see the fact that he did do something with his career. Overall, as a player, of course, never reached the peaks of the other players. Had some spells in Scotland where he impressed enough to get signed up for Premier League Burnley, but then from there, never made any appearances. And then his career just kind of saw him wander around the lower leagues of English football. Uh, look at his biography. He started his career at Dundee, that's where his first professional deal was, I think. I don't know why it says he started Dundee, he started at Southampton, um, but as you can see here, he made 70 appearances and scored 17 goals in two years for Havant and Waterlooville, and then he joined Hampton and Richmond Borough in the English complete non-league, making 70 appearances and scoring 20 goals. So, I mean, he had an okay career at the end of the day, he did get third place with the under-20s World Cup with England, so if there's something that you could take away from it, I suppose it's that... Uh, then we'll move on to Pierre Balance. Yeah, we'll go with Pierre Balance. He was kind of the guy who kind of was the third best player all in all. He made one cap for England in his time. He, he retired um, as a player in 2033. So that was four years ago. So he retired at the age of 35 at Bournemouth. You can see here he made a few appearances for Bournemouth as a player having left Southampton at the end of 2030. Had a really good, solid first year. Second year didn't do anything. Clearly just a player who declined over time. But all in all, he had a very good career. 540 games, 99 goals, 78 assists and 20 player... Of the, well, sorry, no, 19 player of the matches. Looking at his achievements, he failed to qualify and get a Continental Pro license. Brilliant. Uh, but no, he, he did some stuff with the kind of England youth setup. Broke into the international uh, England side at age 25 for one appearance and spent his years at Southampton going up and down the leagues. So that, that's pretty interesting to see. And then last but not least, I suppose the two of most interest, Pure Determination and the Chosen One. Pure Determination, you can see he retired as a player aged 35. He went on to make 119 appearances for England with 25 goals. You can see he won a lot of silverware during his time. Of course, he had very long spells 
at Aston Villa and looking at this um, he did end up going to Burnley for a few years and in those two years he made seven appearances but very solid player obviously 200 appearances for Aston Villa is a really impressive statistic um, since he left Aston Villa really have taken a nosedive maybe he marked the beginning of the end uh, Derek Boyata is currently their manager but you can see here like he really did like with him leaving obviously in 2000 and the 31-32 season is when they had their uh, decline. Was that when he left? I think it, it must have been around then. I think it was. You can see how Aston Villa really declined. So clearly he was a player who was of influence at um, Villa. He won the FA Cup with Villa. He won the Euro Cup with Tottenham. And he won the European uh, Under-21s Championship with England. Um he won the Euro Under 21 Championship Golden Boot runner up, World Club Championship Best Player runner up, and he was shortlisted for the Golden Ball, World Golden Ball, which isn't that the thing that Messi always wins? I think it is. So, I mean, that's not a bad career by his standards. Clearly, he did a job, and he was a stable Premier League player for a number of years. And I guess last but not least, we have the chosen one who is now coaching at Huddersfield. This guy had an absolutely fantastic career. As you can see, he ended up going to AC Milan and then uh, Atletico Madrid for a few years. Um, obviously, his age really caught up with him, but he had his best season of his career at AC Milan uh, with an average rating of 8.25 and averaging seven man of 17 Man of the Matches in 32 years, which is an absolutely insane like little stat there for you guys. Did go to Atletico Madrid, but didn't really get into the first team too much. Obviously, age really catching up with him. And he retired in uh, 2035 at the age of 37. So, I mean, that season that he had with um, AC Milan would have been when he was 35. So that gives you an idea of how good he was. And to play for Man U all the way up until that time is absolutely insane. Uh, in the end, he got uh, 160 caps for England with 57 goals. Um Superb little player. Looking at his achievements in that time, uh, if we go on his entire, is there a way I can get his entire career? There we go. Um, he was named in England seasonal best eleven in 2035. He resigned as England captain in 2034. So he was an England captain, and that was also when he was released on a free transfer by Atletico Madrid. So he was still playing for England. Right up until, well, the end of his career three years ago. So he was playing for England until he was 36. Uh, you can see he won a few things with um, Atletico Madrid. When was he named as England captain? That's what I'm wondering now. Um, he was World Cup runners-up with England. And he got in the World Cup uh, Dream Team in 2030. Um, and he was appointed England captain in 2030. So he actually had a good... Oh, blimey. Four, four years as captain, which is pretty insane by any player standards. So he had a very successful career. Um, he won English Premier League uh, Premier League Young Player of the Year of the Month two times. Shortlisted for the World Golden Bull on nine occasions. And uh, named English Player of the Month on two occasions. And World Player of the Year runner-up. So, I mean, he had a superb career, it has to be said. Um, pretty interesting to see how these players all developed. Of course, they were all exactly equal. It is, of course, worth reminding you guys that, obviously, the players going to Man U, there's a higher quality of coaching. You're playing at a higher level. And so for that kind of reason, it's going to influence the results and how a player develops. But I kind of feel like this um, kind of experiment, research, whatever you want to call it, what I've done, really does show that determination definitely has an impact on how a player develops on Football Manager. Um Work rate is still within question. In the future, I might revisit this and look at work rate in a little bit more detail, as I have seen a number of blogs talk about how work rate impacts a player's development. But it's it's one of these ones where it's difficult to prove or disprove, but I, I, I don't think it can be put into any doubt that determination has an impact on how a player trains and develops. Um, I don't know if there's really any much more I can take away from this. It's really hard with these kind of experiments because there are so many variables, of course, that affect a player's development that it's impossible for me to say determination makes you train so much better that you could become a World Cup runner-up in England captain or you could play in the non-league of Ireland, uh, sorry, in the Premier League of Ireland and non-league of England for years. You know, it's one of these things where 
it's a difficult toss-up. Of course, No Brain lasted until he was 39 and Determination retired at 36, 37. I can't suddenly turn around and say, well, that's his higher determination meant he retired sooner. Like, there's so many correlations and you can get so many false, I uh, guess, results that it is difficult for me to say without kind of any shadow of a doubt that determination affects a player's development but this seems to strongly suggest it and if it's in the interest you you know you can go and test this out yourself um so yeah guys i hope you've enjoyed this little bit of research it's kind of interesting seeing how players careers panned out you know seeing obviously pr work rate retire um and become non-existent uh, in his time uh, and then you've got players like Pierre Determination who just go on to become some of the best players ever to grace the planet, all off of one stat, and potentially that's just the dominoes effect that it has. Um, so yeah, guys, as I've said, thank you for watching. If you give the video a like, it does help me out. These videos, you know, they're not hard to make, but it's time-consuming having to sim through all the years and then um, obviously commentate every so many years. Uh, so, you know, a like just helps me know that you guys appreciate it. And it also helps other people find these videos. You know, other FMers who have maybe yet to discover the YouTube side of things. They see videos liked on YouTube. They come up higher in Google searches, that kind of stuff. As I've said, if you've got any comments with regards to this episode or any future episodes of FM Research, what you'd like me to test out next, leave them down in the comments. I've had some amazing suggestions from you guys already. So a lot of those to try out. But other than that, it's me, Jack, guys. And I'll talk to you in a bit. I'm out.